As I mentioned earlier, the following week's Chain Reaction was hosted by John chatting to one of his all-time heroes. Have you guessed who it is yet? My name's John Peel, and uh, since I was about seven or eight years old, I've been uh, a Liverpool supporter, and meet lots of people who are Liverpool supporters who've never been to Liverpool and probably couldn't find it on the map, but uh, my dad worked there, and the family business was there, and uh, I worked there briefly myself and lived just across the river. So I grew up with Liverpool, and my earliest memories are of them uh, being beaten 2-0 by Arsenal in the cup final in 1950, for which I've never forgiven uh, Arsenal, really. And I can remember when they were in the second division, which is when I was doing my national service, and uh, I think the 16th was the lowest that they sank at that time, and it was a bad time for me, no question about it. And then I moved out to live near Ipswich and uh, had a family, and all of the children have got Liverpool associations uh, in their names, like uh, William, who's 16, who's not interested in football at all, in fact actively dislikes it, is called William Robert Anfield, and uh, my daughter Alexandra is Alexandra Mary Anfield. Thomas, who's 12, and the only one who shows any signs of being good at football, is Thomas James Dalgleish. And uh, Florence is uh, 10, and she's Florence Victoria Shankly. And I've always said, and this is true, that if we had a fifth child, uh, the name Rush would come into it. And uh, so when I was asked to interview someone uh, who I would wish to interview, I asked Ian Rush to come down, and he's done this. So cheers, Ian. Cheers. It's a great honour for me. Cheers. I, can't tell you, I actually didn't sleep last night. Hmm? It's true, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. is, is football what you always wanted to do, even as a kid? Um, yeah, I think... Tell you truthfully, it's most probably the only thing I could do um, because um, all my brothers they played football and they went to, um, they went off to work in the steelworks. No, my dad was a steel worker. And which, really, which steelworks was that? Shot and steelworks. It's oh, closed yeah. down now. That's right. I can see that across mm. the river from where yeah. I live. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Then um, my dad, you know, worked in there, and so automatically you know, brothers went there. So I, I, I thought I was going into the steelworks. So were, you, were your parents supportive mm. when you decided to get into football? Did they encourage um, you? Yeah, they didn't. They just let me get on with it. Um, what they'd done, uh, I remember my dad, uh, I played for Wales under 15s and uh, with the Welsh FA had no money then. And uh, they wanted, um, no, you had to buy your kit then. And it was five pounds it was then. And there was a lot of money, you know, for, for my dad then. And um, my dad, like, just when they said, yeah, you go and get it. I didn't think I was going to have it. And uh, I've still got now the kit at home now. And, uh, no, the first Welsh kit, because yeah. you felt you weren't going to play for Wales again. I and can I, understand I, that. I still have the, the Welsh kit, because you know, he, he, he stayed in for a week, you know, so he could buy me the, the Welsh kit. And he, he was as proud as me, uh, because of, he put it up, you know, in the cabinet and all that. And, um, you know, from then on, you know, Chester, you know, Chester came in and said, do you want to go as an apprentice? And really didn't have to think twice you know I thought oh because if I'm not going to make it I can still go in the steelworks yeah. then and once I made it um, I was professional when I was 17 and just things went so quickly then and then uh, the shot and steelworks was closing down people made redundant at about that time you know, when I you know when I was being professional 17 18 and then I felt you know how lucky I was because uh, maybe I could have been out of the job then yeah right you, know, you, you seem to be a fellow. I've always got the mm. impression that you're a fellow who sort of keeps himself to himself mm. a bit. But how did you... I mean, it's an awful mm. question. It's one of those things that journalists uh, mm. always ask, you know, when they can't think of anything mm. else to say. But how did you feel when you when you left Chester to come to Anfield? You must have been scared out mm. of your wits. Well, I didn't want to go, to tell you the truth, first, because uh, when the pill first came in for me, uh, I, I refused them. And um, all the other players at Chester were saying, no, couldn't believe it because they what are you doing turning down Liverpool? It wasn't because I didn't want to go there, it was because uh, all my family were in uh, Wales and, you know, I was a shy person and I just didn't really, um, didn't really want to go and see what it was like and it wasn't until um, Bob Paisley then um, and the manager Chester Al Noakes came and took me round downfield that I thought, you know, how much bigger the place was and I thought, you know, I'll give it a go. Does it? Does it? It must sadden you at times that you've never really had the opportunity because uh, uh, Wales have not been mm. uh, lucky in international football. Mm. That you've never had the opportunity to really show what you can mm. do in like on the international stage. Yeah, I think that's what's probably one big ambition now is um, to play for Wales in the, a major t no, tournament, uh, the World Cup or the European Championship. Uh, but uh, I say. People say that, no, you must be no sick, that you haven't played yet, but I've had so many great times with Liverpool. I can you know, count myself lucky that, you know, I've played for such a great club like Liverpool, so in the end, if I had to pick between one, you know, uh, 
I think Liverpool's know where your bread and butter is, and uh, you can say I've been. There's a lot of other players that haven't had as much success with me at the club level, and no playing for Wales. Well, very so, few that have yeah. had that much success. Mm. In fact, apart from that, you know, um, really, you know, I, if I did actually qualify for a major final of Wales, I think um, I can sit back and, you know, and tell my kids, you know, um, you know, I've had a, gr- a great time in football. Well, I must admit, when I was about uh, 15, 16, mm. something like that, and uh, I was at a very smart and expensive boys' boarding school where supporting a professional. <laughs> football team was regarded as very <laughs> poor stuff indeed but if somebody had said to me and I, I think this is true if somebody had said to me uh, you know you can play for Liverpool but you've got to die when you're 30 mm. uh, I think I'd have taken that I mean it, yeah. so the, the idea I mean I used to go around with I had a um, when I lived in America I lived in America for seven years and uh, I came back for Christmas in like 1961 62 something like that and they were doing a lot of work at Anfield and uh, I went oh, and I sneaked born, in man. through the construction <laughs> 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 I sneaked in through the construction and I, I got a bit of turf and had it in this mm. locket, you know, around my mm. neck all of the time. Mm. And as I say, it, was, it would have been mm. uh, just to have played for Liverpool once would yeah. have been. Were you fantastic. any good at football or.? I was very <laughs> poor. I was very enthusiastic. Yeah. And um, the, the one thing that I could do, because I used to just practice all the time, mm. you know, I'd, I'd yeah. like uh, when people were saying, like, where's John? I'd, I'd be mm. out playing football somewhere just kicking a ball against a mm. wall because the yeah. romantic oh. story is that then you go from there to play for your country mm. and become a great hero mm. I just kicked a ball I was great mm. at kicking a ball against a wall mm. but not much else and then I, the, the one thing I could do was kick a ball fairly hard and mm. accurately so I used to mm. take all the you know, corners and oh, free yeah. kicks and mm. stuff like that but uh, I was never good at anything else but well, oh, you play a game for us now then <laughs> <laughs> I always used to say it. rather flippantly that yeah. I felt I could I'd never get a game with Liverpool but one or two of the London clubs <laughs> might give me a match or two but it was uh, even now though you know uh, when I go and have a kick around with uh, with my son and his mates i still mm. feel great you know when mm. you when you you feel kind of graceful and liberated mm. and so on and without being fanciful presumably you must feel the same yeah i feel you know when you actually you no know, i've got a ladder three and a half now and um, take him out in the garden take him on the field and we just go kicking balls and you still imagine you know that you're still playing though know, you played in cup finals but you still imagine you know that you are playing in cup finals and do you think do you think most players feel like that oh yeah the problem is when you actually do play in a cup final it all goes by so quick that you don't know what's happened and um, it's not until the it doesn't sink in it doesn't that, go by quick if you're <laughs> on the terraces i can I know, tell yeah. you <laughs> yeah but then um just you watch it about 20 times after on television if you win that is and mm. uh about the twentieth time, oh no, you've scored in the FA Cup final. No, there's hundred thousand people there and so many million watching. Listen, I scored a winning mm. goal at Wembley. I played mm. in a couple of charity matches there, and uh, this was like warm-up matches before Youth mm. International. So it was a good oh, crowd yeah. there, mm. and uh, we did that thing before the match of uh, you know sitting in the dressing room. And it was like TV mm. people against radio people, just playing side to side, mm. you know. And uh, we were saying like you know if you get two goals off, back off a bit. You know, we make it <laughs> a spectacle for the kids and so. But of course, mm. once you come out, you think you're coming out, you're standing there in the tunnel, you think this is really me standing. I know it's just yeah. I'm messing mm-hmm. about, you know, but it's me standing in the tunnel and you run out mm-hmm. and there you are, you're, you're at Wembley mm-hmm. and there's a big crowd there. And of course, as soon as you realize you're out there, you think, well, this business about if we get two oh, goals no, yeah. off, we're going to back mm-hmm. off yeah. to help with that, you know. Just so, actually, in the, mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, uh, in the first one I played in, uh, we won 3 2 and I scored the winning goal. And I, I burst into floods of tears <laughs> and everybody was just saying, What's the matter with you, you silly old fellow? Well, not saying, many people get the chance to no, play at Wembley, that's and, right. Uh, I mean, so, mm-hmm. you know, and I could say that I'd, I'd scored the winning goal. Mm. One of the things that uh, interests me about uh, football now is, well, many mm. things do, but I can remember, like, in the 70s, you know, it wasn't all that long ago, uh, it was kind of a joke that at Anfield, when they, you know, were giving out the teams, mm. uh, the announcer always used to say, the Liverpool team as printed in your programme. I mean, mm. injuries, there seem to be many more injuries now, much more serious <coughs> injuries. I mean, are mm. people being overtrained or what? I think uh, what is, the game's a lot faster now, and... Um, I think in the 70s, um, that was like relied you no know, one's skill and everything. Where now teams that we're playing, um, I think rely on the, the um, you know, the fitness, uh, whether, whether they're skillful or not. They're, they're in the team basically because uh, they can run all day. So and it's more about brute strength than yeah, skill. Yeah, I think that's what's happening now, and uh, the skill factor is, um, you know, is I think it may be going out a bit, and I think that's why the Continentals are a lot better than us, technically-wise, and, you no, know, I think, uh, no, they're a lot better than us because they rely, they, you no know, rely more on, uh, no, the, the skill factor than more the fitness factor. Yeah. 
because I, I, um, I mean, I don't often get up to Anfield these days, mm. which I very much regret, and uh, uh, I do go to the occasional away match, and uh, mm. but mostly I see Ipswich play because I live near mm. Ipswich, and I can get up mm. for a Saturday afternoon match at Portman Road, and. But in the morning, sometimes I sit and watch the uh, Serie A stuff oh, on the yeah. television, mm. and it's beginning to look like a different game that they play. I think um, what's happening now. I think with this new rule that's come in, uh, the goalkeepers you know can pass it back. I think it's taken uh, a lot of defenders anyway. They don't know what to do because basically for ten years they've been passing the ball back to the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper's been picking the ball up. But but now um, I think the, the defenders and the goalkeepers don't know what to do, and I think. No, when I I it's played a lot of in Italy, for touch, isn't yeah. It? yeah. And then uh, I I played in, I've been in Italy, you know, I think five years ago, and no, there's if, if we played when we played away from home, we played for a nil-nil draw, but now you see the game, you know, five four and you know seven threes yeah. and that. That's what's happened this year, and I think basically it's come down to um, I think that rule. So how do you feel about the uh, about the new rule and yourself? Because well, obviously it, it works to your advantage. Yeah, to and... my advantage, really. You know, I love the new rule, but I think uh, for defenders and uh, for some goalkeepers. Um, no, they could get him in big trouble. And uh, well, I, I know a, a friend of mine, this Andy Dibble, who played for Manchester City, he happened to break his leg. You no, know, by the rule, by coming out and um, a four was chased. You no, know, they've clashed, and he's been out for a bit now. With, you no, know, with a broken leg, and uh, you no, know, he's very unfortunate. But I think that rule can cause you no know, sort of problems like that. Yeah, talking about friends, do you? Mm. It must be difficult, like, to have. Uh, like regular friends and things, mm. if people are always being moved on and, you know, mm. in and out of the team, being mm. transferred in and out and so on. I mean, do you have many friends in football? Actually, in football, uh, most probably my best friend is uh, this Ronnie Whelan, who um, we've both been fortunate. No, he's been there, no, 11 years now at Anfield. And he's injured at the moment. Yeah, right? he's injured. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what's happening now is, because um, we came through from the reserves together into the first team at the same time, I think, no, as you say, no people come and go but we've roomed together for 10 years now so really uh, he's most probably the only one that you have a serious you know good relationship apart from you know with Kevin Ratcliffe the captain of Everton at the time um, you know playing for Wales and living by me apart from them to really you know the rest are just there you know as friends yeah do you think there's too much playing for penalties these days I think not that comes again from um, abroad, really, and they, they they were the masters of it, you know, the the Italians and the, the French and that, and but uh, and it's most probably you know coming into the English game a little bit, but all credit to um, well, the English, I think uh, they are they are good, as you know. Even I've seen when players have dived, I've seen their own teammates up and say, "Get up and get on yeah. with it." Do you think that they should be? I mean, if it's an obvious hmm. dive, do you think that they should be? I mean, penalised yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, because. Um, I think they should be penalised, yeah, and um, I think that's what's gradually beginning to happen now, but I think it should have happened years ago. Because I've, I've seen players like, with a reasonable <laughs> opportunity of scoring, mm. actually diving, because mm. I think they've got a better chance with that, which is really... Yeah. Uh, I think uh, from, I think the, the strikers, the, the main strikers, though, um, I think if you give a good striker a chance of scoring, and they're not going to fall over. Mm. They're going to have mm. a shot at goal, and because uh, to be a good striker, you have to be greedy. Yeah. And um, you know, if you get half a chance, there's no way. Even if it was, if you do get fouled, if you try, they'll just try and stay up, and because you know, they want to score that goal themselves. I know you said in one of your interviews that uh, I was reading that uh, you don't really pay much attention to the records that you set and so mm. on, but you've set a couple already this season. What's the next one? Is there anything else coming up that you know about? Uh, I think there's always something. Kind of, I've equaled uh, the Welsh one, so I need one more to actually, you know, be, you know, to stand number one on the all-time Welsh ones. Um, you always, people always say that, they don't, that those sort of things don't mean much to them, but I can hardly believe that that's true. I think uh, you try not, because if you do think of it during the game, you know you're never going to score. Yeah. But um, actually, until this season, I didn't know. They was, I've broken about, I think, about every time I seem to be scoring, I seem to be breaking the record this season. Yeah, very much so. And... Uh, it's only till the press come and tell you, but actually, when you broke it, you can you sit back and say, you know, you know, just give yourself a pat on the back, really. And uh, at the time, it is like I've, I always say, uh, the main most important thing for me is that the team win. Right. And if the team are winning and you're playing striker, there's a good chance, you know, that you're scoring. And um, and the re I, I think uh, with the team winning, everything comes with it naturally. And with breaking records, I think that comes with the team winning. Yeah. So when when you get into one of those periods, as uh, mm. everybody does from time to time, when mm. you go for a few matches without scoring, mm. it doesn't bother you. I mean, how much does that bother you? Um, depends on many. I mean, what, well, what I mean uh, is, if the team's mm. still winning, yeah. you know, and, and so oh, you're playing your part, but no others problem, are scoring. Yeah. It's not a problem if the team are winning, because uh, you know. 
very rarely, you know, 10 men beat 11 men every week, so you must be doing something. So um, I think it's more important when the team's not winning and you're not scoring, so they, everyone say, well, what's happening here? And they uh, know the strikers are not scoring, maybe. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to confidence. I've always been brought up with that to thought that um, you've got to be prepared to miss. If, uh, no, so yeah. if, you, if you miss five and score one... You can come off the field the hero if you yeah. scored the winning no, goal. That's a, that's the the goal yeah, goalie, you no, know, yeah. not in the same position. The goalie yeah. lets one in, had a great game, lets one in. He, he yeah, gets he's... absolutely hammered. The longer you go without scoring, the more you lose your confidence. But as soon as you score that first one again, it's a feeling which most probably you can't describe, yeah. and it's just the confidence just comes flooding back again. What would you like to be doing in ten years' time? Then? Um. I've never really thought about it, really. Um, there must have been you know, times when you come. We must have mm, times over breakfast, where mm, you, or whatever. Mm, you know, there must have been times when you thought. Well, I just well, I, when I first started playing football, when I was eighteen. I said, "Oh, I'll be playing till I'm 30, You know, because at that time, if anyone playing over thirty, then uh, was you no, know, was wasn't playing at all. And you then, um, as you're getting older now, I'm 31 now, and I think I'm still playing. So I feel now that I can play for another three or four years because. Well, you've got a contract for another three yeah, seasons. Yeah, I've got for three years, and um, I think, you know, I'd like to stay in the game you know, in some sort of um, capacity, really, but, um, you know, I don't really know what I do. I just um, really just, I just want to bring you know, my kids up and, uh, you know, to have a, th- what they had, to give them something which I never had. That's fine. So mm. what, how do you think, do you think uh, any chance mm. of, the ta- of the championship this season? Well, and I also felt if we'd have beaten Everton we'd have a great chance of winning it I think the problem is that there's I still think there's one or no five or six it's not, apart from Norwich with people keep saying oh they're not going to do it not going to do it but they're eight points clear now so even they can afford to lose a few games so look, they're going to be there at the end of the season and and apart from the apart from Norwich uh, we're still in touch with the the second place who I think yeah. which is Blackburn or someone so um I, th- I feel um well, I just got to hope that Norwich lose a few now. It's in Norwich's own hands now. But if Norwich lose a few, um, I believe you no, know, we've got you've got to get run, run over. And it's like likes of Christmas, and uh, just after that, when you play a few games, two or three games in like a week. Yeah, there was my, my favourite mm, season was about. Mm, uh, I'm mm, very bad on years, but there was mm, a season when Liverpool were about twelfth or something at mm, Christmas, and everybody had already started writing all of that kind of uh, uh, the sun sets mm, on Anfield, uh, the glory days return to whoever mm, was top, and then there was kind of that March thing. It just, it's mm, just and you, could, you just thought the teams below, mm, above them must have just been thinking, oh mm, no, here we mm, go again, and just winning and winning and winning, and just yeah. ended up I think three points clear or something yeah. at the end of the season. Well, that was me. F- my first championship medal there because I played there we were 12 and uh, I remember one um, I think it was the Daily Mirror or something the the uh, the empire is crumbling and all that and um, I think it was Graham Sooners come and put up on the on the notice board and says no look at that yeah. And from then on, we just like we won. I think we won about sixteen games on a run or That's something. Right. Like yeah, that. It, was, it was an incredible yeah. run because um, I remember it was like mm. my favorite. Whatever year it was, what, what year mm. was it? I think it was eighty one. My favorite year, yeah. anyway, because as yeah. I say, everybody had written the team off. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I remember that, and uh, and I think remember Bob Paisley saying then that most probably the most satisfying championship he's ever he's ever won because we had a lot of young lads in then like myself and Ronnie Whelan and people like that coming in, and uh, like said, Ray Kennedy was still there and Phil Thompson and. Things are, and I think um, he was satisfied because he knew for another like five or six years he still had the championship winning team of Liverpool. Okay, well, mm. well, thank you very much for coming in and uh, doing this, Ian. It's been genuinely mm. been an honour for me mm. having seen you from the terraces mm. on so many occasions. So, thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome.